You've seen me in the dugout, on the field, on the sidelines, and in the locker rooms. You've also seen what I've created in the kitchen, but now we're going to show you how it's made. Hello everyone, I'm Jen Mueller and welcome to I Cook, You Measure. Well, if you followed me on Instagram for any period of time, you know that I love to post pictures of what I'm cooking. I just love to cook, period. So I thought maybe we would spend a little bit more time together to show you how some of these recipes come together. Because for me, cooking is a way to relax. I know it might not seem like that, but it is a chance for me to shut my brain off, to focus on something else. And if I am being completely honest, because I am only focused on what I'm cooking for the 20, 30, 40 minutes that I'm in the kitchen, it actually gives me a chance to pour a glass of wine, or in this case, a little bit of bubbles. You know, when I work at stadiums and when I work games for a living, I'm not home that much in the evening, so I don't get a chance to make dinner as often as I get a chance to make breakfast and brunch. So today, we are gonna start with a favorite for breakfast, some cinnamon rolls, but not the kind that take all day. Those can be daunting and they can be intimidating to start with. We're gonna start with something easy. Cinnamon rolls for two, no yeast required. But first, how about cheers to trying something new and a great recipe for you to try at home. So here's the thing you need to know about me. I love to cook recipes that have already been created. I am not the one who is creating these recipes. I have an entire file full of recipes that I have clipped out of magazines or newspapers. Yes, actual newspapers. I'll show you some of those later. We're gonna cook one that I think came out of Epicurious. I'm just gonna guess, because there's no other markings. It's actually called Shortcut Cinnamon Buns. And here's why it's a shortcut. Because most of the time, if you are making cinnamon rolls, there's going to be yeast involved. There's something that needs it to be light and fluffy. But that takes a long time. I have a recipe for that. I use it all the time, but it does take about four to five hours to complete the process. If you wake up and you have a morning off and you decide that you want cinnamon rolls, that's not the one you want. This is the recipe you want. I've got all of the ingredients laid out here and uh, we will just get started with some mixing. I also have all the tools that we need. Nothing terribly fancy, but it does help to have everything laid out ahead of time. First of all, you wanna make sure that you have all of the ingredients. Second of all, kinda of know what you're in for before you get to step three and realize that, oh, you needed to preheat the oven. Speaking of, you are gonna to wanna to preheat your oven to 375 and you're gonna to wanna to wait until it actually dings to tell you that it's ready before you put the cinnamon rolls in the air. So the first thing we're gonna do is make some cinnamon sugar. That has already been done. So some cinnamon sugar is already ready to go. They have you do that first. It is out of the way. So that's that. The next thing we're gonna do is get two tablespoons of butter and we're gonna put it into the bowl. Now it says that we're gonna cut this. You can cut it with a knife, but what we're actually going to do is pick up a pastry cutter. Now, these are not sharp edges necessarily, but you do wanna be careful when you use it because it is designed to blend flour and butter and pastries together. Speaking of, our flour is already measured here. The flour is a cup and a quarter of all-purpose flour. We're gonna dump that into the bowl together. Now, if I read the instructions here, it says that you can use your fingertips or the pastry blender to make it into a coarse meal. Okay, so if you have not used a pastry cutter before, it does exactly what the name suggests. You are cutting the butter into small pieces and you are combining it with the flour. Now remember, I told you it's not sharp, but you don't want to press your fingers down too hard on that because you will end up cutting yourself. Have I done that before? Yeah, maybe. It only takes once, kids. You learn very quickly. Okay, 
So we've got this mostly blended into a coarse meal. Once you get it to a point where it looks like this, there's no reason to go any further. If you do and you over mix it, it's gonna make your dough tough. So this is just blended together. We're ready to go on to the next step of the recipe. Okay, so we have our flour and our butter mixed together. Now we're gonna add some baking powder and some salt. I've already measured out two teaspoons of baking powder and a quarter teaspoon salt. So we're gonna add this in there. When recipes call for salt, by the way, don't skip the salt. I don't care if you're trying to be healthy. I don't care if you have an aversion to salt. The salt isn't for a saltiness flavor. The salt helps to bring out the other flavors. If you leave out the salt, it's not gonna be detrimental. It's just not gonna have the, the same um, layer of flavors as if you would have added it. Okay, so that's added. We also have a tablespoon of sugar that is still left over. So we're gonna add that in there. So there's just a little bit of a sweetness. Now, if you have experience in the kitchen and with recipes, you will recognize that what we're really making here is a dough that's much more like a biscuit dough. There's a reason for that. Okay, we are now moving on to the next steps. We have one egg and we have a quarter cup of milk. We're gonna use almost all the milk, not quite everything that's in this cup. In fact, what we need here is three tablespoons of milk. So I've got a tablespoon. We're just gonna measure. This is one of those great examples about reading through a recipe the entire way through before you start. Otherwise, and I have done this many times, you would look at the recipe and it says quarter cup of milk and it says add milk. You would dump in the entire quarter cup of milk, which would not make a terrible recipe. Then you'd find out that you actually needed a little bit more uh, later on in the recipe. Okay, dry ingredients, wet ingredients. So we've got the egg. We'll put that to the side. We're gonna whisk this together. If you don't have a whisk, you can use a fork. If you did not have a pastry cutter, you could in fact use your fingers to break up the butter and then just kind of mix it with a couple of forks or with a spatula. But again, this is not supposed to look like a fully formed dough. It is supposed to look like that. I'm gonna quickly give this a whisk. One of the things I love about this recipe is your ingredients are pretty minimal, right? So if you don't do it right, or you know, if you don't have a lot of ingredients in the fridge or in the pantry, you probably have just that much milk, you have an egg, and you have these dry ingredients. They're very common ingredients. Once we have the egg, whisked and we have our dry ingredients together, we are going to combine them. If I read here, it says we are gonna stir until just combined. So what I'm gonna do is take this out. I'm gonna move that over there. And we're gonna move this right here. And I am actually just gonna stir it like this. Could I use a spatula? Yes. Would that require me to do more dishes? Yes. Here's the thing. I'm probably gonna do as few dishes as I possibly can. Also, I just, I don't enjoy the dish part. I enjoy the cooking part. I enjoy the plating part. Some people have told me that doing dishes is the calming aspect of their day. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna strongly disagree with that and truly question what it is that they're doing with their lives. Okay, <laughs> here we go, that's a complete side note. So now we've got this dough. We're gonna clean it off as best we can. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna clean this off as best we can. Kids, this is not the time that you wanna lick the spatula, okay? This does not taste like anything outside of like flour. 
okay? There's a little bit of sugar in there, but not much. You're gonna wanna wait <laughs> for the finished product. I feel like it's almost a halftime break here. Let's just like get our energy together because home stretch on this. Also, fun fact, I, um, <laughs> I do enjoy bubbles, but I have a mimosa drawer in one of my refrigerators at home. I don't get a lot of time at home when I'm in season, so it is not uncommon for me to pour a mimosa at 11 a.m. on a Saturday or heck, an off day on a Tuesday, and I've decided that a full bottle of bubbles, not a great idea. So I have cans of bubbles and um, single servings of OJ so that I can just make a little one and I can be done while I'm cooking and it feels very decadent on a Tuesday because these are the little moments that I need to break up the craziness in the other schedule. Okay, so I was telling you this, this is not what you wanna be putting in your mouth and it's funny because my nephew, who is five, enjoys being in the kitchen but has not quite um, been able to differentiate between flour and sugar. And so like all kids, once you figure out that there's an entire thing of sugar sitting there, you wanna like put it in your mouth as much as possible. Well, he can't tell what the flour is compared to the sugar. So he has taken a few spoonfuls of flour inadvertently. He will learn that. Okay, here's what we've got here. We have our dough. now. If you were making traditional cinnamon rolls, we would need a rolling pin because this dough would be very springy. What we have right here, because this is more of a biscuit dough, we have something that feels a little bit like Play-Doh, like a little bit like sticky Play-Doh. In fact, I'm gonna use just a small spattering. That was some powdered sugar that I was saving for frosting. But what we need is something so that it doesn't stick to the board, okay? Okay, so we're gonna pat this out. Remember, we're only looking for cinnamon rolls for two. The recipe says that it makes four cinnamon rolls. I typically cut this into five or six because it just, I mean, look, I like a cinnamon roll as much as the next gal. It just feels like a lot. What you're gonna wanna do on your board, you saw me use just a little bit of powdered sugar Flour would be the better option. You can also use a little bit of your cooking spray on your hands because it's gonna be sticky and you want it to be sticky. And when you're patting it down, you wanna make sure that it's not stuck to the board, right? So going back to my nephew, if he was playing with Play-Doh, that sucker would be like smashed down to the table, right? We wanna pat it down firmly, but not to the point where we can't remove it fairly easily because we need to roll this, cut it, and put it into a pan. So I would say that what we're working with today, that's pretty easy, right? This is not gonna be springy. It's gonna stay wherever you put it. You wanna make it into a rectangle. We need it to be somewhat symmetrical, not just because it's pretty, but when we go to bake things, this is the same reason that a chef will tell you to cut things in similar proportions. When things bake and cook, if you have them all at different sizes, they're not gonna cook at the same speed. And so for consistency and for flavor and for all of those good things, we need to make sure that this is pretty even. This is the dough, now we need some filling. But remember that milk that we had left over? We need just a little bit of it right here. So you're gonna take your pastry brush, you can use any sort of brush, heck, again, you can use your fingers if you want to. We're just gonna spread a little bit of milk over the top. If you were making traditional cinnamon rolls, there would be some softened butter here. We're looking for just enough like tack so that the cinnamon sugar filling sticks to it. Because if the only thing that's there is the dough, it's way too easy for it to just kinda like glop together and never actually like make that, that, um, that center in the cinnamon roll that you love. Cinnamon sugar, super easy. You can measure it off a recipe. I actually keep some of this around the house because you never know when you're gonna need this as a topping or on some toast. That was my favorite way to have toast as a kid. There's, real, there's no secret to this. And I did, in fact, make more cinnamon sugar than the recipe calls for. 
because you have to have a lot of filling. Okay, there's my cinnamon sugar. Now we need to roll this up. When we go to roll this up, you're gonna roll long side together, right? Because we need to cut this into, let's say five pieces. So we're gonna roll it from here. And if you hadn't thought about this before, or if you hate being the person that gets stuck with the end piece of a cinnamon roll, you know, the ones that, that go on the end, make sure that you're filling, and you saw that, make sure that the filling goes all the way to the edges. I know those center pieces are really good, but you, you don't wanna get to the end and not have any good stuff in there. Okay. My dough got a little stickier than I would have liked today, but this is what you got, okay? From here, we need to cut it into five pieces. I always kind of mark off like where I think this is gonna go first because I want, remember, all of my cinnamon rolls to be the same size. Also, sometimes, depending on how many bubbles uh, I've had, I'm not great sometimes at what this actually measures out to be. One, two, three, four, five, right? So I've got that. Okay, so I have five cinnamon rolls portioned out. I've also got very sticky hands today. And I've got a baking pan. You could put this on a baking sheet, you could put foil down, make this easy, because if this is a last minute idea for a quick breakfast, look, make it easy on yourself. But make sure that you use a little cooking spray, spray the pan, and even them out. We do want the cinnamon rolls actually touching. And ideally, you're going to put the seam sides together. That way, when they cook, they don't open up and lose all the deliciousness. I'm going to flip that one to that side. Okay? So we've got cinnamon rolls that are ready to go. Now they go into the oven. 375. The recipe calls for 18 minutes. I would say start a little bit on the underside of that. I usually go 15 minutes, but I know that my oven cooks hotter than other ovens that I've worked in. So I can always add more time. I cannot take time off if I have overcooked my cinnamon rolls. So these now go in the oven. Okay, so this is what we want. We've got some golden brown on the edges. It's still lightly colored on the inside. Here's why I think this is perfect. Now, some of this is a personal preference, but I want you to remember that the internal temperature of this is still really hot. So when you pull something out of the oven or when you take something off the stovetop, it continues cooking. It does not shut down the process right away. So I always err on the side of just slightly underdone when I'm taking something out of the oven, knowing that for the next several minutes, it's going to keep cooking. That will end up to be perfect. Besides that, I happen to like my cinnamon rolls pretty ooey gooey in the middle, but looks just like cinnamon rolls, right? Almost. We're still missing one key component, at least in my book. So I'm going to put these to the side for just a second and finish that up. I'll tell you what, I was gonna dirty another dish. Why? I don't like doing dishes. Here's what we've got though. The remaining part of the milk, remember it was divided. We used it for three different things in this recipe and we've got powdered sugar. The recipe calls for three and a half tablespoons of powdered sugar, actually confectioner sugar, that's what it's called. I did not measure this exactly. I didn't measure it exactly because this is partly a personal preference and my personal preference is more frosting is always better. I am the person that likes the corner piece on a cake, but only if there's real frosting involved. So this is all it is. Just a little bit of powdered sugar, a little bit of milk. You could add more powdered sugar in here to make it even thicker. 
A nice little glaze will finish this off and give us just a bit of sweetness to kind of balance out the heaviness of the dough. And there you go. Shortcut cinnamon buns. Is an off-day brunch complete without a mimosa? Not in my book. I'd say that's not bad. For 15 minutes of prep work and like 15 minutes in the oven, it's enough time to kind of get caught up on a few emails, to know that you have something ahead for you. But here's my question. Are you the person that like unrolls the cinnamon roll or do you just like dive right in like to the middle? Mm-hmm. I would say it does not matter because we've got so much cinnamon sugar on the inside. The glaze kind of balances it out because it is a heavier dough without any of the yeast in it. Still the perfect little sweet treat for an off-day brunch. And there you have it. That is the first episode of I Cook, You Measure, except there was something missing or someone missing. I didn't do a great job measuring and that's not my strong suit. I think it'd be more fun to have somebody in here with me to do maybe a little bit of the dirty work and the dishes too. So stay tuned next time to see who joins me, see what we make and the conversations that come out of it. We would not be here if it was not for Chef Jeremy and Rain City Catering. Thank you for the use of the kitchen. We so appreciate you and we appreciate the time that you have spent with us. You know, cooking for me, it's one of the simple pleasures. I really enjoy spending time in the kitchen and then sharing a meal with family, friends, and colleagues. But I know that that is not possible for everybody in the community. So for every episode of I Cook You Measure, a donation will be made to a nonprofit in the community who is working to end food security. Because everyone should be able to enjoy a family dinner. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Jerry, cooking shows are a mess. Yes, true. <laughs> Why did we do this? <laughs> I Cook You Measure is presented by Ascend Hospitality Group, a black and female-led independent restaurant group based in Bellevue, Washington. The collection of concepts proudly employs more than 700 people in Washington, Oregon, Utah, and Arizona. Committed to elevating the communities it serves, AHG invests wholly in both its team members and its guests to take service to the next level. Learn more at AscendHG.com.